that get this, I'm Kari, the vacuum tube witch. And today I've got some stuff. A big box of stuff. Let's find out what's inside. <laughs> to the bench. Let's get some better lighting. It comes from a bookshop. So it's probably a lot of paper and it's pretty heavy. This is a knife. And with some incisions. It's the first time I'm uh, testing this knife after sharpening it. And it's way better. With some almost surgical precision. The box is being gradually discombobulated. <laughs> and there's something out of the blue coming up to you. And oh my goodness. <laughs> It's a big one. <laughs> the only thing uh, on on the back side of the cover is a uh, tiny symbol of the vacuum tube with some label on the back and uh, some uh, barcode sticker. And the mystery is being revealed. Universal vacuum, electronic tubes and semiconductor elements from the Technical University of Poznań. Piotr Mikołajczyk. And uh, this is one of the biggest and most informative uh, Polish uh, vacuum tube catalogs. It's all set in Gil Sons. Certainly with monotype. The issue is from uh, 1960. And it's, it's the first time I'm uh, taking a, a look at, uh, at this uh, vacuum tube catalog. Two bases. Abbreviation explanations. Contents uh, where where to look uh, at uh, the tube that uh, interests you. It even has some very old types of uh, vacuum tubes. from uh, different uh, tube marking systems, uh, not just uh, the pro-electron uh, European one, but uh, also the American and uh, pre-war systems. Here we've got some familiar stuff like EF-86 or EL-34. And the, the contents, it's just so long. And now we've got semiconductors. One in 300. Uh, one in uh, 13, uh, 28 is... Uh, the, the highest number in the 1N ranking. So, uh, no 1N407 uh, or 1N4148. Uh, <laughs> also uh, speaks volumes uh, of uh, the history of uh, electronic uh, component industry. <laughs> I will need 
wants to study those tubes, uh, analyze uh, the the meaning of the of the tables. It uh, basically groups uh, the the tubes by uh, functionality. Like uh, Z is a uh, rectifier tube. And uh, there are also characteristics uh, for some types of um, of those vacuum tubes, but uh, this doesn't look like uh, the individual tube data sheet. EF80 characteristics. Power pentodes. And uh, it's a nice uh, parameter comparison. Like if you find a class of, uh, of tubes, uh, you can uh, you can uh, compare the parameters between uh, s some uh, some types uh, to des decide uh, which tubes uh, will match uh, your application. So uh, this is um, the first. Uh, vacuum tube catalog of that style I uh, had uh, two catalogs uh, that are um, slightly different uh, as far uh, how they uh, group the data I will show you those catalogs uh, later but uh, now let's uh, let's go through the entire contents uh, of the box. There are even some firetrons and uh, transmitter triodes. <laughs> so yeah, this is a really big one. <laughs> 1200 pages, uh, mighty impressive, still not as impressive as the other one that I will show you that has uh, volume 1 and volume 2, not sure if I have the volume 2 in, uh, in this box, but at least <laughs> If that's not the case, uh, I will have uh, two volume ones. Uh. So, yes, uh, it looks like uh, I've got two volume ones, but uh, volume two would be for semiconductors. Just an uh, advertisement slash uh, bookmark. And uh, this catalog is uh, similar to the one uh, I just went through, but it's in a uh, worse condition. The box goes off the bench. Let's see if it's any different. It's uh, it's also the universal vadamacum. Some markings, uh, but not the library. So it comes from a different uh, a different uh, place. Oh, it has a uh, library stamp. The marking is uh, not all that uh, not all that clear. 
But the library was located in Łódź, in, in my old city. So, uh, it's the same stuff inside, but uh, a worse condition than this one. So, let's go through those two. Or just one of those two. Let's zoom on in. It's uh, from a uh, technical library from some factory. Not exactly sure which one, but uh, yeah. So uh, this is the two-volume uh, issue. Volume 1 is for the receiving tubes and uh, volume 2 is uh, for semiconductors and uh, and special purpose uh, vacuum tubes. So I guess that's uh, that's CRTs, that's uh, transmitting tubes, uh, firetrons, uh, all that kind of stuff. And uh, I mainly use uh, receiving tubes, so uh, I uh, I don't regret uh, getting two first uh, volumes uh, rather than uh, the first and the second. There's a preface, and uh, this uh, this stamp, this marking, it comes from uh, a uh, a factory named uh, Dozamet. Uh, I think uh, they made uh, they made some uh, clothes irons uh, and uh, heating uh, equipment. Of course, uh, Russian preface. Some explanations. Something more of use for you. <laughs> Auf Deutsch, bitte! <laughs> Tube socket uh, diagrams. And reference tables. So if I want to look for EL34, I need to go to page number 239. But uh, 239 here, it's not the page I am looking for. Not this one, but this one. <laughs> These are not the numbers you are looking for. Two, three, nine. And it's uh, for pairs of pages rather than uh, single pages.
239, ELF 834, and uh, ELF 60. Look at that. It's a thing of beauty and a joy forever. A lot of pages with um, the push pull amplifier design, ultra linear. 43% uh, UL tap characteristics EL 156 uh, I will make an amplifier with those tubes someday I got five of them in my lab but I need the sockets for them Four of uh, good old um, Bakelite uh, temperature resistant sockets. 6550, very well known uh, among uh, audiophiles and uh, guitar and bass players. There's just so much data in this catalog. And uh, it's also set in Gilsons. So those are four Biggest vacuum tube catalogs from uh, 1960s Poland. But they are not the only catalogs that I have in my lab. I had uh, two smaller ones. I had them... Uh, one of them I got uh, in my... Uh, in my uh, second lab time uh, in Wunsch before I moved uh, to Gdańsk. This is the first c vacuum tube catalog that I had. It has uh, a lot of uh, introductions and, uh, and information uh, about uh, vacuum tube uh, theory of uh, construction and operation. It's all in Polish, but um, but yeah, it's uh, it's a good read. It's indeed a good read. Scope CRTs. I think there was an image I wanted to show you. Energy levels in uh, in sodium. So it also it also touches uh, physics. Not just uh, vacuum tube construction, also touches semiconductor physics. So it's uh, 160 pages uh, of um, theory and uh, introduction, uh, followed by. <coughs> by uh, vacuum tube uh, equivalent tables that can also come in handy when uh, when looking up uh, a uh, a tube uh, I'm not familiar with because most of uh, the tubes that uh, are in use in my lab uh, 
it's uh, it's the European uh, Philips uh, and uh, Mallard uh, system. So I don't really <laughs> have too much to do with uh, American or, or Soviet tubes. That sometimes happens, but uh, not all that often. And then we've got uh, tables with parameters for each uh, individual uh, type of tube. Still not uh, not anything close to a real deal uh, data sheet. Like, uh, like here, ECC82. ECC83. EL34. And uh, at the end of the book, we've got a table with explanations uh, as to um, what uh, what parameter in uh, in the catalog uh, means what. Uh, like uh, two is the heater voltage, uh, three is the heater current. If I if I want to check the Plate current, for example, I have to look up uh, number 10. If you work with this catalog uh, a lot, <laughs> you have a chance of memorizing those numbers. And uh, then the last catalog. I got it from uh, a guy uh, who once uh, brought uh, a radio uh, to my lab uh, to repair and restore and uh, he had this and uh, a bunch of other books in uh, his collection he didn't need that uh, he gave it to me so <laughs> yeah now i've got an inscription <laughs> technical data and characteristics. So uh, this catalog uh, contains uh, much more info and also uh, equivalents. Some theory about uh, the Philips Mallard uh, system of uh, tube marking. The Philips Mallard and uh, Pro Electron that uh, evolved uh, from that. Uh, this was the standard uh, of European uh, electronic component uh, markings. Both tubes and semiconductors and uh, the semiconductor marking system uh, somewhat uh, evolved uh, from uh, the tube marking system. And uh, there's some introduction. About uh, characteristics, uh, parameters, uh, CRTs. But this introduction uh, cuts it short at uh, 65 pages. It's also uh, all set in uh, Gilson's with a uh, with a uh, slightly peculiar thing, because uh, if you if you take a closer look at uh, the lowercase a, this is not typical for Gilson's. <laughs> Sometimes this uh, alternative variant uh, of Gilson's was um, used in Polish typography. While the Mikołajczyk uh, catalogs, uh, they used uh, they used uh, standard uh, Gilson's. Oh yeah, they they use standard uh, Gilson's like uh, like you see here. And <laughs> I can talk uh, your ears off about uh, this typeface because this is my favorite. 
<laughs> Electrum into our tubes. Uh, some uh, pretty uncommon stuff. And then uh, we've got... Uh, We've got uh, tubes uh, ordered by type uh, alphabetically. Some of those tubes have uh, more data and some of them uh, have less. To the point that uh, some uh, don't even have uh, characteristics. ECC 82 83 And of course let's go to EL 34 So uh, there's uh, a bunch of characteristics and uh, operating points uh, you can use uh, in your amplifier, but uh, those two pages are all there is about um, ER34 compared to the big uh, single volume uh, Miko Y check. Uh, 239. Oh, wait a moment. Uh, was it that one? Yes, uh, two pages on EL34 characteristics, operating points. All the data. None of that, none of that shortish rubbish. Let's uh, let's look up uh, ER34 in this catalog. Soviet tubes. Lots of Soviet tubes. So apart from uh, semiconductors, that would be the part with uh, American tubes. But uh, looking at the L34... It's 228. Six P seven S and uh, the EL thirty four operating point table. The next page is uh, thirty seven thirty eight, but uh, there's no characteristics on the EL thirty four in this catalog. It's very strange. Like I, I can't see it. Uh, I can't see those uh, anywhere. So if I want to check the characteristics and parameters on uh, on the thirty four, I best take the first volume, not the big one. Oh, <laughs> 228. Uh, I haven't noticed that uh, it continues uh, to this page and m 
Maybe even further. Oh bloody hell. <laughs> Was I stupid? So uh, there's a bunch of uh, pages uh, cluster under the the same, let's zoom out, uh, classed under the same uh, number. So this is not all there is to it. 228, 228. 228, 228. So it's, uh, it's an uh, aggregate uh, data on a uh, bunch of uh, different vacuum tubes. Here we've got uh, the 34 characteristics uh, that continue to this page. But uh, 228 still contains uh, EL37 even KT-66. Six L-50. And here it ends. So this is uh, the ten full pages of text and, uh, and uh, characteristics. Not only on the EL34, but uh, also uh, different uh, similar tubes. So this will be a most welcome uh, addition to my library. <laughs> and now... <laughs> My collection of vacuum tube catalogs uh, has grown from uh, from two to six, and uh, since I've got uh, doubles uh, of uh, of the new catalogs, I might uh, send uh, one of each to someone I hold dear. And uh, speaking of vacuum tube catalogs, uh, a little thought, uh, I've got a little thought about um, tube catalogs. Uh, while I have um, thousands and thousands of uh, tube data sheets uh, on uh, my uh, HDD, I don't really enjoy looking at uh, at the um, data sheets on my computer. I prefer the paper version. <laughs> Call me old school. I guess that uh, you have to be old school enough to do vacuum tube electronics already. <laughs> so it doesn't bother that uh, I, uh, I do it the old way. But that helps and I can always smell that paper. And uh, I can always go over to my uh, science and technology bookshelf, uh, grab the vacuum tube catalog, put it on my desk, analyze some parameters. Uh, it puts me in a good mind space. So that would be it for the vacuum tube catalogs from old Poland. Uh, we didn't really have uh, that much of those uh, it's not uh, it's not all there was but um, because uh, because there was um, the telam uh, catalog uh, i'd like to have there was um, the other then the small uh, miko white catalog from the 50s uh, i'd also like to have that because having different catalogs from uh, different uh, different years, uh, different issues. It helps a lot because uh, some tubes uh, become obsolete um, 
as time passes and uh, sometimes you have to look up uh, those old tubes and uh, you can't uh, find them in recent catalogs you have to dig in uh, in the old literature and sometimes you have to look up uh, some uh, pretty modern tube like a new vista or or some uh, sub miniature stuff and uh, and that's uh, where where newer catalogs uh, come in handy plus uh, I'm a bibliophile and uh, a uh, typography aficionado <laughs> and uh, some catalogs just look much better than the others like uh, there's uh, there's this webpage, uh, Frank Phillips uh, homepage that um, has uh, tons of uh, vacuum tube data sheets from different catalogs like uh, Old Phillips, uh, New Phillips, uh, Mazda Bellevue, RCI uh, La Radio Technique, uh, and uh, many 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 others and uh, even uh, between uh, two um, issues uh, of the of the same manufacturer like in philips uh, you can uh, you can find a uh, massive uh, difference uh, in how they look and in how they were set uh, just like you saw uh, in uh, this case so, like the, in the old Philips catalog, uh, it was uh, it was uh, set in uh, serif uh, monospace typeface, just like um, like those used on uh, typewriters. And I don't really like the look of uh, of how uh, how it reads. Uh, while uh, while the newer one and it was uh, it was properly set with uh, with hot metal typesetting and uh, that's uh, that one's a lot uh, cleaner easier to read uh, looks uh, so much better so <laughs> if i uh, download uh, a data sheet and uh, don't like the look of it uh, i tried to find uh, a better one <laughs> but uh, it's just me it's just scary the vacuum tube witch and i will carry on doing my stuff <laughs> see you in the next one stay determined and carry on